Co-Creating Language Debrief with Sandra Collins and Gina Co. <laughs> so Gina, I was laughing to myself because I have a really difficult time with metaphors. Oh. And it's because I had a brain injury years ago and I can't um, I can't make the metaphoric connections properly. So I started off talking about eggs in a basket. And then all of a sudden you're, I'm talking about juggling the eggs and you don't juggle eggs, you juggle balls, <laughs> but I've lost the, you know, I've got the connection between the metaphors in incorrect in my brain. So then that kind of threw me off a little because I was, because I was kind of laughing to myself about you know, all right, should have been a little bit more planful about the metaphor to make sure that it actually would make sense. So we came back to the eggs in the basket, but I was just yeah. a little bit of self-disclosure about one of the challenges that I have, which is kind of interesting to talk about, uh, well, whether we're talking about neurodiversity or we're talking about other kind of um, challenges uh, in terms of language, like language barriers, metaphors is an, is a tricky thing for some people, right? I mean, the metaphors that are meaningful to you may not be meaningful to me, yes. um, especially when we're dealing with new immigrants and refugees, our metaphors may make no sense. So when we're trying to co-construct language, it's complicated. There's all these different layers. Mine's a little bit of a, you know, uh, maybe an exception because it's a bit unique to me but it got me thinking about that no Sandra I love this conversation so much because um I you know at east side um I've watched so many of my amazing colleagues use metaphors and I I feel I feel quite comfortable using metaphors either co-created metaphors so I might introduce a metaphor or the client introduces the metaphor and we continue to co-create you know that moment when you said uh, juggling eggs. Uh, now, uh, an idea I, I, I thought right away is use humor. Like I might say something like in transparency, you might say something like, "Oh, we actually don't juggle eggs, right? Because that would be dangerous," or something like that. Oh, yeah. you know, like I would. Good idea. Yeah, I, I actually in my own practice, and you know, even even on my website, like um, I let my potential clients know that I, you know, my clients have told me that humor is really helpful, and we mm -hmm. do that session so yeah I would inject some humor in that one <laughs> yeah I mean it's and also it would you know we were doing a short clip but it would be a good opportunity for some self-disclosure on my part you know to just say you may hear me say things like this that you know because sometimes I'll say cold when the metaphor requires hot or some of those sorts of things you know so um this is why and you know Let's just laugh at it when I get it off track there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and self-disclosures can be so helpful and so powerful and so empowering. I'm noticing, Sandra, more and more now, I, I do use self-disclosures. And so when I do, and it meaning, it's meaningful to the client, they will just look at me and say, wow, thanks for sharing that, Gina. It so helps me va feel validated or feel mm -hmm. like you're really listening to me. And thank you for sharing your, your story. So, mm hmm yeah, thanks for this little debrief, because I think it's important that we recognize that um, things like metaphors are not going to work for everybody, mm -hmm. um, or they'll work in a different way, or, you know, that um, there are, there are people behind all of these skills that we're presenting, and we all bring our particular ways of expressing ourselves, and so it's also about finding what fits for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.